one of the uh, innate, innate deficiencies of superhero storytelling is the unending continuity. The unending continuity that never changes too much. There's always a status quo that needs to be maintained. You know, the thing that makes a, a story and a, and a character satisfying is that it ends in some sense. They go through uh, meaningful, maybe life-changing events and then the story ends. It concludes somehow. I think a conclusion is important. But when a story can't conclude, um, I think it, it starts to bog things down. So, like, in the instance of The Killing Joke, my sort of takeaway is, is it possible that a sort of touchstone of, of, a, of a piece of art or a, a sort of a focal point in a medium, is it possible that it, it can become obsolete after a while. I feel like the killing joke has been buried in in so much subsequent continuity that the story itself is just kind of it doesn't really have too much of an impact. So like the scene for instance, where is it? I put flip and bookmarks here. Okay. So the scene when uh, when Barbara Gordon gets shot and crippled it's a great sequence. You've got the pinpoints of light in the Joker's eyes. You've got Barbara Gordon's frightened expression. But uh, since the time of the killing joke, Barbara Gordon was, was in a wheelchair, went on a bunch of other adventures. She uh, got out of the wheelchair. She's, she's Batgirl again. She's, and there's been, you know, the Joker has died and come back to life a million times. Batman has died and come, come back to life a million times. And I feel like this the killing joke is too mired in like the broader superhero continuity to really uh, it doesn't have a sort of uh, an isolated uh effect like I, I reading reading batman year one like you can read that and not read any other batman stories and you and you are you're you come away with a satisfying yarn whereas the killing joke it's like yeah, me as like a, someone who like knows superheroes, like has a, a, a vague sense of like who Batgirl is or and but like I'm still not really emotionally attached to like what happens to to this character necessarily. Like I'm I'm not a, like a big Batgirl big Batgirl fan, so like I I can understand like at the time that this came out if you had spent a lot of time reading the previous issues you'd be like damn that's real shocking that the batgirl just got shot but like here in 2022 it's like yeah she got shot she got un unshot she got out of the wheelchair so like i don't know what does it really matter and that kind of extends to the the uh, the attempt at a backstory for the joker where if the if the intent is to sort of uh give joker a supposed origin i don't think it really it, i don't think it really does that job too well either like you get the broad strokes of like yeah he's a failed comedian he's got a wife and kid that he needs to take care of he, he takes a a job that he doesn't really want to do but he needs the money but then it's just i don't know it's kind of just the shaggy dog story where at the end he's like well that might be my backstory but i can't really remember it that well and it's just there's there's so many other like retcons and just stuffing things back into the box since then like haven't they gone back to like the joker he's just like a mystery man he's just like a mystery so i don't know it, it's it just i don't i feel like it doesn't do anything really and so and the ultimate sort of the ultimate uh turn into the joker here there's this scene where he crawls out of the uh I'm going to get to the coloring here, the, the, the change in colorings from one edition to the next, because I think that's pretty important. But he crawls out of the river here, and he just he turns into the Joker we all know and recognize, and it seems kind of abrupt. Like, he just crawls out, and he just starts laughing, and is that supposed to mean, is that supposed to mean that the sort of chemicals altered his brain? Because if not, like, the, the sort of, the sort of, idea of of you know one bad day can can turn a normal man into a, a raving lunatic 
Like that whole sort of conceit is kind of undermined by how abrupt he sort of goes from kind of a Debbie Downer sad guy into like cackling maniac. Like, yes, this is, he's doing a, he's doing the job the day after his wife and, and young child died, but I don't know. Like there, there, there should have been a, uh, uh, some better, you, you should get a better sense of his mania, I guess, I guess, in the, in the, the preceding scenes, you should get a sense that he, he's a man who's coming up to, to the, the, uh, the, the point of mania and just then he breaks, where it's just like, it's just kind of, he's a miserable sad sack and then he's, uh, he's just a laughing maniac. Um, okay. Back to uh, Alan Moore and his sort of uh, seeps, his his c confronting what he hath wrought, confronting with he ha what he hath wrought in uh, the comic book medium. So I can appreciate him sort of like recognizing his kind of uh, or or, or uh, taking responsibility for what he perceives. As the sort of way that the comic books sort of, um, I don't know, have become edified, have have become sort of uh, adopted a sort of pretense of maturity, which has then sort of had the opposite effect and kind of regressed the audience. Um, I can appreciate that, but it's also like, what do you expect when you have Jim Gordon crouched naked in, in a cage? What do you expect when you have Barbara Gordon get shot and then have naked photographs taken over and maybe this is just like i don't know underestimating the impact that the book would have but it's kind of like i f feel like you you had to have known beforehand like this this should have been the very obvious sort of uh consequences of of uh edifying the characters and that's kind of it is just when the story when the story doesn't feel like it has any really personal rooting when it doesn't feel like when i when i'm like emotionally detached from the characters and the events it it just kind of feels like isolated edge lord like it doesn't it, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel really more mature or, or more a more like grown up uh, uh, progression of superhero storytelling. It just feels kind of like the pretense of maturity, like you know the the uh, boobies and guns and like the the sort of a sort of shallow pretense to to I don't know mature characterization and and I don't know uh, the the last scene. Of the killing joke. I don't I I think all the, the fucking the the speculating about this scene is just manufactured. Like, did he kill him? Did he break his neck? No, I don't think he did. I think it's pretty cut and dry. They're just they're just the uh, you know, two sides of the same coin, sort of sharing a laugh and sort of you the, the takeaway is that they are just sort of two sides of of madness or whatever. I don't know. I I I think people like to make too much of things. Uh, so yeah, so I got this book uh, knowing that it was sort of the recolored, I think it was like 2008 or something, they recolored it. But then I went back and sort of uh, compared uh, this version to the previous one. And I, I, I think I much prefer the more uh, garish coloring style of the original Killing Joke. And I wonder if maybe... I would have come away with a different interpretation if the original colors had sort of been preserved. But uh, I don't know. I appreciate that Alan Moore uh, showed some restraint. That was kind of a nice, like, uh, he's just sort of letting the images tell the story here. Whereas, you know, the the uh, the Swamp Thing, I was, was rereading all of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. And uh, he goes on to these, you know excessive narrative deviations full of flowery prose and just like I think that kind of gets away or uh gets in the way of the story sometimes so I appreciate just a sort of straightforward 
funny book uh, story in, in with just the dialogue and I like that. Uh, I I, th I I mean I guess I'm like I don't mean to be like overtly negative. Like it's a good it's a good uh, fun quick read. It's but like as far as it being uh, as far as it being some like monumental piece of literature that sort of is a standout of the of the medium i don't know like i can kind of i can kind of recognize the influence that it's had and, and i can appreciate that but i feel like a lot of that has just sort of been lost to the whatever cultural churn the the sands of i don't know uh anyway the killing the Killing Joke. Uh, I didn't, I don't think, I don't know if I got it. Okay, goodbye.